I'm building a shipping container house that I designed myself. We've made a lot of progress on the exterior of the house. I still need to put the siding on and turn the front two containers into the front porch. But now the attention is on the interior. We have completed the framing of the gray room. Now this video is about framing of the bedroom here. But before we do the framing, I have to do a lot of cutting and welding to combine the two containers to form the big space for bedroom number four. We also moved the bath and the closet further north for easy piping and wiring. Before I cut the space open, I wanted to support the middle space with one inch thick wall tubing. So I would cut the tubing to length, jam them into the space, and weld them to the walls. By now I've learned to weld metal to shipping container walls. Shipping container walls are 14 gauge steel, so I have to be patient, set the amperage right, and sometimes I would have to use dab welding so that I don't puncture holes in the walls. Now, even if I puncture holes in the walls, I actually know how to fix them. Now I crawl through a hole that I cut between the two containers to get to the other container to weld the support beams. The hole was cut for me to access one of the two containers because the welder who welded the strip to combine the two containers at the very top created leaks and I had to get to the space to stop the leaks. Here I'm building a support system to jam the 2x4s into the walls. I think it's going to work because this is going to sit on top of the 2x4s. Okay, I like this so far. Let me tag it then figure out the other side. That is not quite exactly right, but let me tag this right away so it doesn't fall on anybody. Even though my welding skills have improved greatly, my overhead welding is not great. What I do to compensate for that is to use a grinder and a brush wheel to grind away the slag so I can weld it again and again if necessary. Just to make sure the weld is good. It takes more time, but I'm patient enough to make sure I get it done right. I use both 70, 18, and 60, 13 for stick welding. 60, 13 is much easier to use because it starts an arc very easily and it doesn't stick very easily. 70, 18, however, is better with higher tensile strength. I try to use 70, 18 whenever possible, but 60, 13 is very user friendly and it doesn't puncture holes in thin walls very easily. The shipping container already has a two and a half inch beam at the top. I'm welding a one inch thick wall beam to the two and a half inch beam. I welded both at the top and the bottom of the one inch beam. I do this to form a mini letter frame kind of structure. And I put the welds at every 10 to 12 inches. So this will give it real strength.
Here I'm rigging up the support for the one inch beam at the top. I've now moved to the other container through the hole that I cut into the two containers to set up the support to weld both the vertical beams and the horizontal beams to reinforce the structural rigidity of the shipping containers when I cut the walls open. I've also opened the door of this shipping container for better ventilation. I always wear a respirator when I weld and I hope that if you weld, you do the same as well because it is a good protection for your lungs. It took me literally days to do the welding and cutting. I was very patient and I took my time to do all this simply because I think it's very important to make sure the structural rigidity is not compromised at all. The space between the two vertical support beams is about 28 inches. Initially, I thought about cutting that portion of the wall out as well, but I've decided to keep it. I think the closet space is big enough with an eight foot span. So keeping the walls will help with the structural integrity of this bedroom space. These 2x4 braces were put in place when my friend Dominic cut 40 foot containers in half to form the 20 foot containers. Now these containers have been welded properly to the 40 footers. It's time to take the braces out. Call it a day here, maybe? No, I'm just close the door first. They want. I have a letter right outside the door of this container. So. I climb on the ladder and close the door. Just like I yeah, planned it. So you would fall naturally 
within the V shape of the two by fours and the letter. I used to have very elaborate support structures to keep the uh, tubing up there. And now I found out that this is actually the simplest way of doing it. You simply get a two by four and then add more height to it at the bottom to whatever length. And you can jam it in there to the top. Um, and it's very stable. Just a simpler way of doing it. Here I'm using a grinder to grind away the overhead welds to check the quality of the welds. And if the welds are not good, I will then go back and weld it again. And then grind away the slag. And if it's no good, I weld it again. After I welded the support beams, I finally started to cut the walls out using my plasma cutter. so slow on these two things on the containers here um, not ideal it certainly goes against my tendency my tendency is to go fast now that I have access to the gap between the two containers I made sure that I would weld both the top and the bottom of these two containers together every 12 to 13 inches panel of the wall has been removed. It's so much easier to go between the two containers instead of having to crawl through that hole.
I gradually developed my own methodology in doing this. First I cut a section of the wall out. Now I have access to the gap between the two containers, so I would weld the top and the bottom of the containers together. Then I would cut the other side of the section out. One thing I do want to note is that we have already welded a quarter inch steel tab at the very top between the two containers. So the gap between the two containers has been sealed off at the very top. What I'm doing now is essentially to create a letter frame like structure for the seam between the two containers together. With all the beams welded together, there's basically an eight inch wide letter frame structure that is really strong. I use 3M's respirators. I have a couple of them. I use both the 2091 and the 2097 filters. I do like the 2097 filters much better. I think they do a far better job even though they're a little more expensive. Here I'm connecting the two vertical beams together with steel tabs. I welded them together to prevent them from bowing out. This is the upstairs of the shipping container house on one side of the house. This is going to be two bedrooms. There's going to be a four foot hallway coming this way, through this door, and through here. And 
what I've been able to do is to cut the walls out of the two shipping containers to form this bigger space. Now, this is going to be a space that would house the full bath for this side of the house. And it is a regular bathroom that is five feet by 12 feet. And then from this point on, um, you're gonna have a door here and you're gonna open the door into this bedroom here. So this bedroom is going to be roughly 16 feet by 13 feet. So it's a pretty decent bedroom here. And the work that I've done, and I've done this work very slowly just to make sure that I do this properly. I have basically built a solid beam up there. So this is almost like a eight inch wide beam up there. They're joined together like a letter frame between the two with welds every 12 to 13 inches. And I've beefed it up with one inch tubing on either side of the tubing already. So this is a solid, solid beam up there. It's not gonna sag. I put a laser to it and it's working great. The 20 foot container has been welded to the 40 foot container all around. So it is well connected, it is solid, but for a good measure, I'm putting another support beam right in the corner for my peace of mind. Here in this corner, I added another beam for good measure. Now this is me doing the cleaning up of the place to weld spots where I think I need to add more welds and to clean up the place for framing.
The first thing the framers did was to help me to get the walls out of containers by sliding them down the ramp that were built with 2x6 by 16. And it worked really well. The last thing that we moved out of the containers was an Econoline bench seat. I will use the bench seat in the garage as a mudroom bench. The framers went right to work. They are great framers, they know what to do, and they work hard. In this video, you're gonna see me hovering around them all the time. I feel guilty for doing that, but I designed the house. I know every last inch of the house. So I just wanted to make sure that things are done properly. Um, it just looks kind of silly, but I just couldn't help it. This little area where we have the full bath and also the entrance to the bedroom and also the closet is probably one of those really tricky places. It took them a long time to do it, but I think they did a great job of it and they did it right. If you look at the construction details of my shipping container house, you will realize that I'm not aiming to build the cheapest house possible. I'm aiming to build the strongest and the most unique house possible. So um, I have built a tiny house out of a 20 footer. I will make a video about that someday soon. And I'm using that tiny house as my work trailer and it works great. But this build is not a cheap tiny house. I feel this framing team is a really efficient team. The main framer knows exactly what to do, then he has the person helping him to cut the lumber to size, and then he would then nail them together. I think he 
does a really good job knowing what measurements he needs and how to solve problems if there are any problems. So I'm really lucky to have them to help me with the framing. You will notice that the ceiling rafters are spaced 24 inches apart. I actually got a good tip from one of the viewers who commented about the rafter spacing. He simply said that if you're not using the rafters to hold up anything other than the drywall, then why don't you space it 24 inches? So I took that advice and I think it's working out great for us. This bedroom and the full bath were a little tricky to frame. Still, it took them less than two days to frame it. They did a great job of it. Here are some pictures of the whole process. And thank you for watching and subscribing.